are listening to Shadow Horse Theater Broadcasting. We come to you from the shadowy fields of Minnesota with Dark Pony Radio Show. Presented to you by the Dark Pony Players. Featuring Mike D. Introducing the Scarlet Courtesan. And now is, as always, the Dark Gentleman. These human creatures do the most meticulously malarkey mundane tasks to join a club. (sighs) My gentlemen of the dark, you are such a smooth snark. Some famous humans, which I have met, sat in a room telling stories for a bet. The famous eclectic Elizabethan club. Hmm. Let us get a peek at the story they offer. Sit down. Rest a while. Let us humbly horrify you whilst you imbibe your most infectious Iridescently irreverent libation. I believe everyone who's going to be here is here. My dear Yates, can't we give people a moment or two? Oh, come off it, Ava. I mean, yeah, they should be here, but if it's just the, uh... uh, How many? Four of us. Damn it, Rob. We just got started. Conrad, how many times do I need to tell you? Call me Frosty. I'm not calling you Frosty. I know I'm going to regret this, but why do you want to be called Frosty, Rob? Please, Ava, don't. (laughs) Because it sounds cool. (laughs) (sighs) Can we get started? Yes. I would like to officially start this next session of storytelling at the Lizzie Club. Raise your glasses. Cheers. 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 Now, I believe it is Ava's turn this week. I understand she's got an interesting one for us. Thank you. I have a story of comedy. And horror. Ooh, sounds promising. In a dark basement, two siblings, Addison and River, get their revenge upon one Simon de Canterville. You did this to yourself. Please, please, you can't. Don't talk with him. Let him stew in his own filth. I didn't want to. You must understand. It wasn't supposed to happen. But it did. You made it happen. She would have done it to me. Don't worry. We won't be as cruel as you were. We left you food and water. I can't reach it. I can't. Can't. <laughs> Reeves! Addison, he doesn't deserve anything. Hmm, I wanted to give him hope, River. <laughs> Why? He's still family. I. I, I loved her, but. <laughs> he literally severed that tie. Whatever bond we had to him was cut when he cut her. Please don't leave me down here alone. (laughs) You won't be alone. The darkness shall be with you. Addison, put the last brick in place. No, please. No! I don't like it in the dark. I don't want to be in the dark. I'm sorry. Are you? Who's there? Simon. 
Are you sorry? I... I think so. Pathetic. No, please. I thought maybe you would want vengeance on those brothers of hers. Yes. Yes, but, but how? I'm... I'm bricked in here. Die. What? Die. Die. <laughs> Die. Die. Uh, oops. Uh, damn it, Rob. We are just starting. Call me Frosty. It's just a glass. Uh, Frosty. Come sit. <laughs> Thank you. Years later, in the same house, a Lord Canterville is outside talking with the estate's buyer. And from the window above, we overhear their conversation. You're selling this mansion for a very livable wage. I'm in no need of money, but rather in need of selling my family estate. I've not cared to live in this place since my granddaughter, the Dowager Duchess of Bolton, was frightened into a fit, which she has yet to recover from. I understand when family events and grief make it hard to be attached to places in your memories. It is more than that, I'm afraid, Mr. Otis. Ah, Harry. Mr. Otis, I feel born to tell you that a ghost has been haunting this mansion and many of my family members for generations. <laughs> Lord Canterville, a ghost ain't gonna scam me or my family away from the purchase of this house. Shh. What was that sound above us? Hmm. Looks like an open window. I didn't leave any windows open. You see yourself, the ghost is haunting us now. Silly. I fear the ghost exists. It has been well known for at least three centuries. It seems to make its appearance before a family member dies. So does a doctor. Ghosts do not exist, Lord Canterville. You are a very cocksure American. Well, just remember I warned you. Ah, oh, this is my card here. I shall send the final papers to your lawyers. Please. Take care, Mr. Otis, of you and your family. New family, new family, new blood, old blood, fear. They will die, they will die. Otis family. Otis. Otis. New family. New family. It's just there. Please, Hiram, get the twins in Washington off the floor. Mrs. Omni has prepared a lovely meal for us. But, Mom, this is so neat. I really think you should leave it alone, Mr. Otis. We will be there in a moment. That is the stain of blood from Lady Eleanor de Canterville, who was murdered on that spot by her own husband. That is horrid. Please, Hiram. Washington? Yeah, it. You and the twins go and grab Pinkerton's champion stain remover and Paragon detergent. The stain will not go away. Even if you remove it here, it will return tomorrow. Mrs. Umney, that is hogwash. Finally, you joined us at the table. And don't talk down to Mrs. Umney. Are you sure we should still be here, Dad? The week before y'all came here, I was alone in this mansion and was not once roused by a ghost. 
Like I've told you all before, ghosts, ghosts don't, don't exist. exist. But this place is older than America. The evil that could be here. <laughs> did you hear that? That, look, we did it. Ah, very good. See, Mrs. Omni, the stain is gone. It will return, sir. Kids, get up here and have this here food. The stars and stripes? I'm not calling the twins that. But, Mom, they like to be called that. Hiram. Uh, Washington, get your siblings up to the table. Lucretia, my dear, I don't like it either, but how about we indulge them a little? It was a big move. I'll think about it. After food. Now sit and eat. I swear I hear something. New family. The stain will remain. The stain will remain. It shall never be removed. Death is coming. I shall remove you from my home. I shall remove you from my home. The stain will remain. The infinite stain. A reminder of pain and misfortune. The day continued with no more interaction from the ghost. But once night engulfed the estate, the ghost moved about the living room to start terrorizing the family. Oh! Is one o'clock in the morning? Whoa! It is late, and I am trying to sleep, as is the family. Now, I noticed your chains are making an awful racket, so I brought you a small bottle of Tammany Rising Sun Lubricant. It's said to be the best. I will leave it here on the end table. Now, good night. What's going on? That stupid ghost chain's rattling. <laughs> Tammany Rising Sun. Oh! Knock it off. I'm trying to sleep. How is this possible? How? I've never once been humiliated like this. Me, the ghost of Canterville. The one who made Lord Canterville himself choke on the knave of diamonds while getting ready for a party. I gave Madame de Tremulac the scare of a lifetime by reading her diary as a skeleton in her room. I used the knowledge to give her a brain fever. That kept her confined to her bedroom for weeks. The butler who shot himself because he had seen a green hand tapping at the window pane. These people are different. I'm going to have to change the game. But before anything, I must reapply the stain. This plan will take a few days. Yes, on Sunday next... I shall make them scream in horror. <laughs> One week goes by and the family has no more occurrences of a haunting. Only the blood stain continues to be a problem from day to day, changing colors as well. But then it becomes Sunday night, and the ghosts put their plan into action in the Great Hall. Ah, my old suit of armor. The terror I have solicited from others. This shall surely make them run in terror. I 
just need to carefully put the pieces on. Ow! Ow! Damn! 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 That, that hurt! That was too loud! Uh, hopefully the sound will make them uneasy. What is all that racket? Hmm? Stars and straps, stay close. Oh, that was you! Children, raise your pea shooters. Huh? Put your hands up, ghost, or we will shoot. Very well. Children, open fire. Ah! Well done. The ghost has been scared away. Now, let's carefully find our way back to bed. In his rush, he blew out the candle. What was that? How, how dare they? Thinking they could scare me. <laughs> I shall haunt them all night with my terrifying laugh. <laughs> I am afraid you are far from well, and I have brought you a bottle of Dr. Doble's tincture. If it's indigestion, you will find it a most excellent remedy. I shall leave it here on the ground. Now, good night. What is wrong with this family? How are they not scared? It must be all these tonics and concoctions. At some point, I must push through their senses. Hmm. Think. I feel I must do something extreme for them to truly be in horror. Yes. I have the perfect plan. I shall make little Washington cry and never want to sleep in his bedroom again. <laughs> For tomorrow night, their screams will be echoing as music to my ears. True to the ghost's word, the very next night, while a storm rages outside, the ghost begins their ascent into the children's rooms. Ah! I have my butcher knife, and as I climb the stairs to small little Washington's bedroom, I shall start to gibber as he awakes. Take this knife and stab my throat over and over again. And as he screams, bathed in my blood, it, it's perfect. Wait... What is that at the top of the stairs? In the shadows. What is this? Uh, who are you? Uh, uh, please, who are you? Why aren't you moving? No! Leave! Please! Ah! Your head! It fell off! Ah! Stay away, ghost! Stay away! <laughs> <laughs> well done, Stars and Straps. You scared away a ghost with a ghost. Oh, what do I keep saying? I can't take this anymore. I need to go back to my room and just to have some time alone. After the humiliating defeat and self-loathing, the ghost tries again and again only to be humiliated more by the stars and stripes and the rest of the family. The only member of the family who was not terrorizing the ghost was Virginia, the eldest. She saw no reason for it. Some say it was pity that she had in her heart. 
But I believe it was a simple desire to help and to know the unknown. Some time passes, and the ghost stands just outside of the kitchen eavesdropping on the family. Ah, and the twins here made the ghost jump in terror just by saying, boo. Virginia, the Duke should be arriving today to talk about possible nuptials. I cannot wait to see him again. This was delicious, Mrs. Omni. Could you help me with the children to get them ready for the visit? Come, children. Uh, Lucretia, dear, we should prepare. They're gone. You can come out. I'm so sorry for you. My brothers are going back to Eton tomorrow. And then if you behave yourself, no one will annoy you. I see you have stopped with the blood stain. It's absurd asking me to behave myself. Quite absurd. I must rattle my chains and groan through keyholes and walk about at night. If that is what you mean, it is my only reason for existing. It is no reason at all for existing. And you know, you have been very wicked. Mrs. Omni told us the first day we arrived here that you killed your wife. Well, I, I quite admit it. But it was a family matter and concerned no one else. It's very wrong to kill anyone. Oh, I hate the cheap severity of abstract ethics. My wife was, well, well, she was very plain and was terrible at cooking. And, uh, well, you know, it doesn't matter. <sighs> but I don't think it was very nice of her brothers to starve me to death. Though I did kill her. Starve you to death? Oh, Mr. Ghost. Uh, Simon. Simon. Sir Simon. S Sir Simon. Are you hungry? I have food here on the table. Would you like it? No, no thank you. I never eat anything now, but... It is very kind of you all the same, and you are much nicer than the rest of your horrid, rude, vulgar, and dishonest family. Stop! It is you who are horrid, rude, and vulgar, and dishonest. What? You know, you are the one who stole my paints out of my box to try and furbish that ridiculous bloodstain. I was very much annoyed. Well, really, what was I to do? It's really difficult to get good blood nowadays. And your brother with his Paragon detergent, I certainly saw no reason why I should not have your paints. Very well. I will go ask Papa to get the twins and an extra holiday week. Uh, please don't go, Miss Virginia. I am so lonely and... So unhappy, and I really don't know what to do. I want to go to sleep and cannot. That's quite absurd. You merely go to bed and blow out a candle. Why, even babies know how to do that, and they are not very clever. I have not slept for three hundred years. For nearly three hundred years I have not slept, and I am so tired. Mm, poor, poor ghost. Have you no place where you can sleep? Far away, beyond the pine woods, there is this little garden. There the grass grows long and deep. There are the great white stars of the hemlock flower. There the nightingale sings all night long. All night long he sings, and the cold crystal moon looks down 
and the yew tree spreads out its giant arms over the sleepers. You mean the Garden of Death? Yes. Death. Oh, death must be so beautiful. To have no yesterday and no tomorrow. To forget time. To forget life. That sounds peaceful. You could help me. How? You could open a portal to death's house. For love is always with you. And love is stronger than death is. Um... Have you ever read the old prophecy on the library window? Oh, often. It goes... When a golden girl can win prayer from out the lips of sin, when the barren almond bears, and a little child gives away tears, then shall all the house be still, and peace come to Canterville. It's curious, but I do not know what it means. They mean that you must weep with me for my sins, because I have no tears. And pray with me for my soul, because I have no faith. And then, if you have always been sweet and good and gentle, the angel of death will have mercy on me. And if I have not? Then your soul shall share in my punishment. You will see fearful things in the darkness, and you will hear whispers. I understand. I know that I have been rude to your family and you. Although I still find them very vulgar. I'm not afraid. What? I will ask the angel to have mercy on you. You will? Oh, oh, joy. Okay, quickly. Quickly, we must head to the tapestry chamber and be undisturbed. Beware, Virginia, this will not be easy. We may be gone a long time. I understand, Mr. Ghost. Uh, Sir Ghost. Sir Ghost. Everyone deserves forgiveness. Oh, sweet little Virginia. Let us go. The two of them reach a tapestry room. The ghost holds on to Virginia as they both walk straight into one of the tapestries. The world disappears and becomes colder and gray. There is a mist around the ground on their feet. The tapestry they walked through is reversed. They have entered the slight. Where have you brought me? It's a slight, a hidden place off the real place. I sometimes hide here. We will be undisturbed here to begin. What must I do first? I will stand here, and I will call upon the Angel of Death. You must place yourself in the center of the room, penitent. Azrael, dulce, mortem horrendum, a teclamat popilas tus. Tenella, Osculum, Pentendo, good night. Ego, Simon, de Cantavilla. Petaum, compresses, Coromeet, Procutario, Mea. Concide, Nobis, Autoteniam, Fascinatium, Gratite, Tue. Who are they? What is happening? 
Virginia. She approaches. Sweet Virginia, keep your eyes closed. If you look upon her beauty, you will be lost in the slight for all time. Sir, Simon. Can we get through Vogus Dixie? Vogus Dimisabel. I have found someone who will stand with me and for me. of his wife with great affection. He made a mistake and wishes to be at peace. Virginia, don't open your eyes. Don't ah! dare look upon my visage. He say love is stronger than death. I have love enough for him and myself. If you are to keep him in this limbo, then I will be happy to join him. Virginia, no, please. I don't want this for you. My mistakes are not yours. If my suffering can bring a small bit of joy, love and happiness to him, then I'm happy to do it. Here, here. I must say, well done. Terror, love, and comedy. Rob, what do you think? Thank you. Thank you. But there is one part of this silly story I forgot to mention. You three 
are the only ones I've ever told about what happened in the slight. Are you saying it's all true? Of course. And if you talk about what I've shared today, I will hunt you down and send each one of you to the slight. I face down death. I've lived two lifetimes that nothing scares me. All right. I believe it's Rob. I mean, Frosty. Next meeting. Oh, oh, what what did I miss? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your story, it was, uh, it was good. Yeah, creepy and all. It is weird what humans call humor. While my sadistic sense will measure, I have a clever idea to play on these creatures. It will slay. I can see the wicked, wacky wheels turning behind your painfully purple eyes. Such beauty, I can't wait for you to share. It will have to wait for time it takes to create. Lamentably, tis the hour of our bewitching, the gentleman of the dark and I wishing you good night and, and adieu. adieu. You've just heard tonight's performance of the Dark Pony Radio Show with voices from the Dark Pony players. Matt Sachs, Max Bessner, Matthew Kelly, TJ Jacobs, Terrell X, Nicole Loren, and introducing Megan Noel Johnson. Featuring Mike D. Sound designer and engineering from Benjamin Conklin. Behind the Evil, written by Terrell X. Performed by Carnage the Executioner, courtesy of the artist. This performance was adapted from Oscar Wilde's Ghost of Canterville, written by Aid Hajaj. This is a Dark Pony production. <laughs>